Hi guys, I'm Sam from the Unity of Life and welcome back to my channel. So today we are looking at the Draft to Survive Season 2 Episode 2. Quick reminder that this all occurred in 2019 and we are telling a very long story with Formula 1 starting with a very brief history then look at the Draft to Survive Season 1 of the documentary series on Netflix, move it on to Season 2 then three and then looking at women in motorsports in general as we are trying to challenge gender equality um, and race in this sport because there's not an awful lot of diversity where race is concerned either. So in this episode, um, it must have been a good episode because I've got quite a few notes on this episode so let's buckle up and get into it. So. Haas as a team that still had quite a lot of tension in 2019. So the way that this sport seems to work is that they seem to have rich, um, rich investors or they get sponsorships um, and you need more than one sponsorship. So uh, a rich energy, uh, energy company drink whatever it was decided that they were going to invest a whopping 35 million to Haas in 2019. So Haas actually started the 2019 season very strong. They did better than they did in the 2018 season and they thought that this season might actually be the season that things turned around for them. However they as the as time went on they just ran into more problems and it just wasn't going to be the case that this was the season that this team was turned around and started actually being a threat and being able to compete with those bigger teams so they couldn't actually find out what was the issue with the car which is never um a very good thing you want to be able to know what's going on with the car what's wrong and so you can fix it However, they tried multiple different things and nothing seemed to work. So uh, one of their drivers, which there was the same drivers as last the year before in 2018, which was still Kevin Magnussen and Grosjean, Roman Grosjean, I think I'm still saying that right. Um, they, one of they, them, had actually said it was one of the worst cars that they had ever driven in their whole entire lives, which is not something that you want to hear if uh, you've invested thirty-five million pounds into a team. Nor is that what you want to hear from um, an engineering point of view, or if you're even a head um, and you're the one running the team, or even the team owner. So they went from being fifth, which was very good for them, um, in the World Championship to ninth. So they dropped back four places. Um, so if you remember correctly, we mentioned that if you're not familiar with this sport, each driver, with if they're the top ten um, on the track, they get a certain amount of points, starting if you win from 25, going all the way down to one if you're tenth, and that all contributes to the Drivers' World Championship. However, the teams also have a Constructors' World Championship, um, that's what other teams compete with. And that's what has had come down from fifth to ninth was was in was the constructors championship. So not one of the two drivers were remotely happy with these cars, um, and there was a lot of pressure in that team to find what the problem was, and there was also a lot of frustration, and that pressure probably came from their investor because they've invested so much money into this team which was an awful lot of money and they took this gamble that just wasn't paying off at all you know they weren't getting any results they didn't have a decent car at, uh, for the money that they put in they just weren't getting anything back out of it So Kevin has to take a five place penalty 
which happens to can happen and does happen to every single driver out there um uh, and that was because uh, there was an issue with the gearbox so it wasn't something necessarily that was his fault um, but uh, because it's a team sport and he's the driver in the car and the team hadn't really checked the car he was the one that uh, had to suffer that five place penalty and not only does it affect him but it does affect the team as well because even if he did miraculously win the race he was then only be fifth he couldn't go any higher than fifth place so the race would uh winner would be whoever came second um so the gearbox actually had to be changed during qualifying and uh in case you know where there is rules um, and regulations on what and when they can fix the cars during those three days so after the gear box was changed, the car went faster in the qualifying, which was good news in one way because they thought they found the problem and they were able to fix it. However, it wasn't going to do an awful lot with the five place penalty that was enforced. So in the race, the car then decided to slow down. So in the qualifying, they thought they'd fixed it and that they fixed the problem and that the cars were going to start going as fast as they could um, because it was really fast in qualifying however when it actually came to the race day the problem hadn't only one problem had been fixed but the car overheated and that's why it slowed down um and Groshon even mentioned that there seemed to be absolutely no grip whatsoever with his car um with the tires on the track so that's probably a bit like bambi on ice um and kevin's car so it was great on that or had overheated had also slowed down and the team ended up finishing 19th and 16th um and don't forget that it is 20 drivers on the in um f1 and you also do have drivers that do unfortunately don't finish the race for whatever reason which is usually because there's a mechanical re uh, problem with the car and it had to, had to be retired or um, a driver has crashed so kevin started to question his own capabilities um in the it had it was the car uh which wasn't up to the best standards and i suppose that can be quite heartbreaking um and because of the word that left remember mentioned me mental health with his teammate i suppose um if the, these problems do keep occurring that you think that maybe the problem isn't actually with the car but it is with yourself um you know uh, you, you would start to think that maybe you, it's you you need to practice more you need to be the best driver and that you know you're letting your team down so yeah there's a lot of pressure into this and so because the car just wasn't functioning it wasn't given on the best results that um this rich energy was trying that i'd put into this car remember that it was they put in this 35 um million pounds investment they decided they were going to cancel their agreement with us um and that was down to the very terrible performance and the issues that they had with the car because they weren't getting the results that they wanted especially with all the money that they had put in so that was really disappointing and really upsetting for Haas so that then means that Haas decided that they needed to bring back one of the cars from their last season to see what and that they tr decided that they were going to do that to try and see what the actual problem was with the car their current car that they couldn't figure out what it was and why it was failing so much so they wanted to compare what was working in the previous car to the cars that they had down. 
so like i've mentioned before all the drivers they want to win that is the whole point of a race is having that agility adrenaline and want to win a race and it has to be like i've mentioned also in the past that it has got to be the most frustrating feeling in the world when you don't get that win um, especially when you know that you have the talent and you have the capabilities to be up onto that podium at least um, however talent and is going to get you so far um, and technology is going to get you the rest of the way as well because you can only be as good as the driver as your car um, and I know a lot of people do say that there's no talent in it it's all to do with the car because they've got the best car possible that, that that's why they win all the time and like i said that you know you do have to have a talent and um, to be able to drive them it's not just the car itself it'd be a bit of a weird and stupid place that was the case because you can put two different people who in in the car that aren't professionals that don't do that driving in the exact same car as those professionals doing the might not necessarily get the same results so um a lot of the time when the car breaks down or something bad happens and that obviously reflects quite badly um more so on the team than the the driver because the driver is literally just driving the car um and feeding back and giving the team data so during the silverstone race um well, they they were testing the the, the cars and the, the drivers um, made, but they basically they both made contact and both cars were out of the race. So they had to be retired. So it has still had quite a lot of bad luck. So there was actually quite a lot of hostility between the teammates, um, to the point where Kevin got told it he could leave if he was not happy and he did not have to come back um there was a lot of testosterone in the air which just caused heads to be butt uh, to be butted and obviously there was an awful lot of frustration going on for both teammates because they both believed that they had these capabilities they both had the talents to get there but because what had happened in that race is that they both they had made contact with each other taking each other out of the race um they blamed each other for that um and you know it wasn't a happy place to be in with um to be racing with Hass. so the Hass's owner um so remember Haas is an American team they do have quite a successful NASCAR team um, he couldn't see a future for this team in F1 at all which we know is not actually the case because we do now know that they're still there in 2021 so Rick I have lost but so we we know that has to still um still having this bit of bad luck um this isn't going going to change um and for an owner to say that they don't see a future in that spot has got to be uh, heartbreaking for everybody who runs and works that team and and works really really hard so that's all i have on this episode um so like i said if you like this content and you want to help make the, the world a better place because we are all going on a journey together and we are all helping each other out to the best of our own abilities because there's only so much that we can do as an individual um we've got to have these big dreams okay even if it seems impossible you've got to try still don't be put off because you think it's impossible and you've got to try and make that impossible happen and we can only do that by working together and take these small little steps to help change the world and one of those ways that you can help with this fight is by supporting me on my channel and getting um the message out there um 
because I am also providing a lot of education um, on the animal side as well as trying to uh, fix the wrongs in the human societies and try to make sure that we all are equal to each other no matter our gender, our race, our sexuality or our how we identify as well so uh, the way to support me in my channel is to click on my face and subscribe and turn on that notification bell and you have the option of being notified for all my videos which i recommend because they're quite interesting or you have the option of only occasional videos on which you can customize or if you just want to hear about the f1 videos or if you want to hear about the different animal videos so the playlist for my previous videos will be here the first episode will be up here and so you can click on either of them and um, please don't forget to comment and share and with all your friends this content and uh, i'll say it again please do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in the next video when we talk about the episode three bye